Hiya folks, it's Jocelyn. Welcome back to my channel, Yogi with a Book. Today I have a recommendation video specifically for books that would work for the Latinexathon that I am co-hosting with three other lovely booktubers. I will leave my announcement video both in the cards and linked down below if you want more information about the readathon. Basically, it's starting on the 22nd of September, going for a week. For that readathon, we have five different challenges, and one of them is a group book, so technically, I guess, only four other challenges that you might want to pick books for. And we all figured that we would give you recommendations from some of our favorite Latinx books. The first book I'm going to talk about today is The Invention of Moral by Adolfo Bioy Casares. Casares was an Argentinian writer, and this is considered by many a classic work. In fact, Jorge Luis Borges considered this as a perfect book. It's actually quite short, coming in at just about 100 pages, but the plotting in this book is so much more intricate than so many others that I've read before. Since this is so short, I don't want to give too much away, but I will say that this is a surreal sci-fi novel set on basically an abandoned island, and we follow our main character in a sort of philosophical descent into madness. Our narrator is almost completely unreliable and becomes more so as time goes on, and the whole thing just sort of reads like a fever dream. If you love short stories and you want to read something translated, I would definitely suggest this one for our prompt roots. Another translated book that I recently read is The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector. She's a well-known Brazilian author, and this is another short story, only about 96 pages or so on Kindle, and it absolutely blew me away. Once again, we have a narrator whose reality is a little bit different from others, though this one is a writer who is completely absorbed in the creation and life of one of his characters. Even though this book is only 90 some pages, I highlighted so much of it on my Kindle to go back and read because Clarice Lispector's writing is just absolutely breathtaking. And once again, I'm running into the problem of talking about this book since it is so short. So instead, I'm going to leave you with the opening of this book so that you can get a little taste of the brilliance of it. All the world began with a yes. One molecule said yes to another molecule and life was born. But before prehistory, there was the prehistory of prehistory, and there was the never, and there was the yes. It was ever so. I don't know why, but I do know that the universe never began. Make no mistake, I only achieve simplicity with enormous effort. So yeah, it's a really wild story and one I would totally recommend. This would work both for roots and heritage. For the challenge pride, I'm sure no one will be surprised to hear me recommend the author Anna Marie Micklemore. She's one of my favorites and I talk about her pretty constantly on this channel. She is a queer Mexican-American author and her and my favorite book by her is the one we'll be talking about today, which is When the Moon Was Ours. Like all of Anna Marie McLemore's books thus far, this is a YA magical realism romance book, and it's just absolutely breathtaking. This story takes place in a small town, following Miel, a girl who was found in a water tower and who has roses that grow out of her wrist, and Sam, a trans boy who creates moons for her. Their relationship is absolutely sweet. The atmosphere, I think, especially in this book, is really well done. There's a lot of spookiness, there's some pumpkin imagery, perfect for fall and this time of year. And also the chemistry between Sam and Miel is just some of my favorite. The dedication in this also made me bawl because Anna Marie Mecklemore's husband is also a trans man, and so this is one of her more autobiographical works in that way, and it's just so touching and beautiful and made the story even more impactful for me. I'd also really love to talk about Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, who is a Canadian-Mexican author. Certain Dark Things is so far the only book I've read by her, but oh my goodness, it blew me away. This is a paranormal urban fantasy set in Mexico City and follows modern-day vampires, one of them who is actually an Aztec vampire, and her name is Ot, and she's just so amazing. Ot's entire family was basically massacred in front of her by a European vampire family, and so the story really starts with us following her on the run. The antagonist in this is basically white toxic masculinity personified, and he is horrifying. With the help of another young Mexican man, Ot faces him down, but make no mistake, she does most of the work herself. If you like paranormal urban fantasy and women who actually kick ass without needing men, absolutely pick this one up for our challenge voices. 
Hey, so sorry for this sort of vloggy edition, but I did have one more book that I wanted to add that I totally forgot to film earlier, and that is Love Sugar Magic by Ana Mediano. This is a middle grade, and it happens to use Spanish in a really interesting way. First of all, our main character Leo is not bilingual, but a lot of the people in her family do speak Spanish, so it's throughout the text continuously. But also, this book is about bruja cocineras, or like kitchen witches basically, and all of their magic is in Spanish, which I thought was really adorable. This book is just a lot of fun, especially if you like middle grade. There's obviously a lot of whimsy, there's spells gone wrong, there's our very curious protagonist Leo not wanting to be left out by the rest of her family, who she doesn't know are brujas. Leo is a Mexican-American girl growing up in Texas. She has a really big family and we get to see all of them kind of come in and even some ghost relatives, which is really fun. It kind of gave me Coco vibes, so if you're in the mood for something light and especially easy to get through, I always feel like middle grade is a good place to go, so that's another recommendation. So there you are, five books I would recommend for our Latinexathon, and my co-hosts are also going to have videos going up with their recommendations. Let me know down in the comments if you are planning on picking up any of these books, and don't worry, it's not too late to participate in the readathon. And you can go ahead and check out our Twitter for more information down below. The next video I'm gonna have up for the Latinexathon is going to be my own TBR, but I love to chat more with you in the meantime. So that's gonna be it for me today, but I'll have another video out shortly. Bye.